and Michael Jackson fans, there are some people who theorize that he was, that your mom was actually kind of in a, in a way the love of his life. Have you ever heard that? No, I heard. I think they loved each other. I knew that you were gonna be a giant star, I really did. Well, thank you. Yeah, but I didn't know. What I didn't know is that you were gonna get so <laughs> That's the son of the legendary Diana Ross, revealing a lot more than we knew about his mother before. But wait, there's more. Because my mom's able to have um, an amazing career, but she's also an amazing mother, and she was able to raise kids, and that's... It seems that Diana lived a life we were never fully aware of. Rumors, controversies, and struggles. Despite facing it all, she never failed to amaze her fans with her music. <laughs> Diana produced music that wasn't just about the melody, but also reflected her emotions. Apparently, this is one of the songs that made her and the fans a bit emotional. It's safe to say that her life depicts struggles deeply affecting her mental health. Now, her son has allegedly spoken about the challenges she endured throughout her life, even as we enjoyed her music. It can be hard to imagine that a celebrity who seemed to have it all could have faced numerous challenges. But Diana Ross's life epitomize the hidden struggles that accompany fame and fortune. With the new details her son has revealed, Diana might be quite different from the image you had of her. Diana Ross is hailed as one of the most influential performers ever, with a career spanning over five decades, starting with the Supremes in the 60s. Her fame is so immense that she was chosen to close the Queen's Platinum Jubilee show, surpassing stars like Duran Duran. However, it appears all the success came with a cost. Born in Detroit, this Motown star has enjoyed massive success throughout her life, but it hasn't always been easy for her. Ross undeniably boasts a remarkable career, and the numbers speak volumes. The Detroit Historical Society notes that she sold over 100 million records, released 57 albums, and garnered numerous number one hits and awards. With such accolades, it's understandable why some might find it hard to believe that the singer's life isn't the fairy tale many imagine, especially considering she's not just a solo success, she's also credited with helping discover stars like Michael Jackson. Reportedly, Michael also confessed his love for her. I knew you would. What? Be <laughs> Don't you, do you guys think Diana dated Kiss singer Gene Simmons for a short period. However, soon Ross found out that she wasn't the only one who had a relationship with Gene Simmons. It almost led to the end of her friendship with Cher. Both are American icons who achieved superstardom in the 60s. But in the 70s, they both had an interest in the same men, particularly the Kiss member. It's thought that Cher was involved with the rock star first in the latter part of the decade. Simmons and Cher were residing together in Malibu when he developed feelings for Ross. In 2015, Simmons said, One Christmas I asked Cher what I should buy her and she said, Call my friend Diana Ross. She will tell you exactly what I like as she is my best friend. So I called Diana up and we went shopping. Then our feelings for each other developed very fast and we started a relationship together. I guess thereafter Cher and Diana never spoke. After dating Jean, Diana Ross later tied the knot with Norwegian businessman Arne Ness in 1985, whom she later called the love of my life. Their marriage happened swiftly after the meeting. In addition to becoming a stepmother to Arna's three children, the couple welcomed two sons together, Ross Arne in 1987 and Evan Olav in 1988. Diana Ross and Arna Ness were married for 13 years until things turned dark, and Ross divorced Arna in 2000. Unfortunately, the tragic tale continued. In 2004, the BBC reported Arna Ness's death in a mountain-climbing accident. Ross was interviewed after his funeral, and despite being divorced for four years before his passing, she expressed her grief, stating, It was a very difficult day. It's been a very difficult week, actually, for me and my boys. My sons have had a very hard time. It's been a great loss. Diana Ross may seem to have had everything, but her memoir, Secrets of a Sparrow, reveals a different story. After losing the father of her kids, she admitted that her life felt quite lonely 
especially during her years as a single mother. With no one to share responsibilities or rely on, she carried everything on her shoulders for a long time, leading to a complicated relationship with solitude. While Diana Ross values her solitude, she also feels guilt. She writes about how the extensive weeks and months of traveling were difficult, causing her to miss her husband and children. She adds, I even begin to feel guilty. I start to think that the person watching them is not taking care of them the way I would. I talk to my children all the time when I am on the road, and I form pictures in my head of how their faces look while we talk. While we thought it was all, it turned out it wasn't. In her book, Diana Ross reflected on her childhood and gained a deeper understanding of her mother's hardships to ensure their happiness. She also remembered the circumstances surrounding her mother's passing, which occurred two years after being diagnosed with cancer. Ross wrote, It was fast and traumatic for all of us. We could see that she was trying to hold on to life, but we could also see that the life was slowly leaving her. During that period, Diana Ross was busy with a series of concerts at Radio City Music Hall. After each show, she would fly back home to Detroit, then return to New York in time for the next evening's performance. One of her greatest regrets in life was not canceling the shows to spend more time with her mother. She wrote, I tried to be strong for her and the rest of the family. When things are actually happening, it isn't always easy to know what's right. Diana had also lost her brother to M in his own house. Diana Ross talked lovingly about her siblings in her book. Her brother Arthur was called T-Boy when he was young because he was very small for his age. Then, in 1996, both T-Boy and his wife, Patricia Ann Robinson Ross's bodies, were found in their house's basement in the Detroit area. They had been married for less than a year. According to the Tampa Bay Times, both Arthur and his wife were tied up and suffocated with plastic bags. They were found dead in their house's basement estimated to have been there for two to three weeks. Jet reported that neighbors alerted authorities due to a foul odor from the home. Ross expressed her shock in a statement. I loved him very much. Diana Ross was a close friend of the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Their friendship is a significant part of music history. They often attended events together, co-starred in The Wiz, and collaborated on multiple occasions. They were so close that Jackson's will stated if his mother couldn't care for his children, they were to go to Ross instead of any other family member. Reportedly, Michael Jackson was also in love with Diana Ross. And when she tied the knot in 1980, Michael was jealous because he said, I loved her and always will. This might be one of the reasons why Michael confided in Diana to take care of his kids after him. Her travails didn't end there, though. In the early 2000s, Ross found herself spending 22 and a half hours in jail after being arrested for driving under the influence. The incident occurred on December 30, 2002, in Tucson, where police stopped Ross from driving into oncoming traffic. Officers conducted a test, revealing a blood alcohol concentration of 0.20%, significantly exceeding the state's legal limit of 0.08%. Ross was permitted to address her case via phone from New York, but was ultimately sentenced to 48 hours in jail, of which she served just under half. However, she was released early due to the unavailability of a female guard for her stay in Greenwich Jail. Overall, Ross spent 47 hours in the custody of Greenwich Police over three days. While we thought that a superstar's career is everything, from Diana's perspective, it isn't. Many would assume that she was drunk driving after leaving a party, usually what many celebrities do, but it appears her reason for drinking was far from just gaining pleasure. Reportedly, Diana was struggling with and alcohol addiction. In 2002, People magazine reported that Ross had checked into a and alcohol rehabilitation center. There were no details shared about her treatment, with the official statement simply saying that she was there to clear up some personal issues. They also stressed that she had entered the facility voluntarily. Apart from her personal struggles, she faced many ups and downs in her career as well. Diana Ross began her singing journey in school, forming a girl group inspired by the local all-male ensemble, the Primes. Renaming themselves the Supremes, they achieved a string of hits. Their talent caught the eye of Smokey Robinson, who helped them secure a recording contract. For Diana Ross, this marked the start of an illustrious career, but for others, it meant fading into obscurity. 
Despite appearances, Diana's life wasn't the superstar fantasy as many imagine. She candidly shared her journey in her memoir, revealing that her departure from the group wasn't as seamless as it seemed. The Supremes accomplished a lot in the short span between signing with a record company and disbanding. They were together for nine years. The first major change happened in 1967, when Florence Ballard faced challenges with alcohol addiction, leading to her dismissal by Barry Gordy and the other members. She was replaced by Cindy Birdsong. Just three years later, Diana Ross would also bid farewell to the group. Mary Wilson, one of the original members, left, revealed to The Hollywood Reporter that things took a turn for the worse when Florence Ballard, still coping with the aftermath of a traumatic essay, departed from the group. Wilson believes this is when Diana Ross began pursuing a solo career, which ultimately led to the group's demise. Why did she leave the Supremes? I think it was just, you know, the point of, I'm tired and I want to quit. You know, we were working very hard. We were. It was like living out of a suitcase for four or five years. In 1986, Wilson published her memoir, Dream Girl, My Life as a Supreme. According to The Telegraph, she was upfront about her experiences while promoting it. Wilson didn't hold back, sharing anecdotes about Diana Ross's fiercely competitive nature. She reportedly said, If you happened to be in her way while she was going toward the center, that was your fault. She craved attention, and in her attempts to get it, she could seem almost ruthless. During the peak of the Supreme's fame, Diana Ross felt a unique sense of gratitude. In her memoir, she expressed how she recognized their luck in achieving success while it was happening. While many realize their fortune only after it's gone, Ross always appreciated the opportunity to make a living doing what she loved singing. However, she was honest about the pressure of a tough schedule, lack of sleep, constant traveling, and performing non-stop on tours. She shared that it got so difficult that she couldn't even eat at one point. She said, I'd put the food in my mouth, but my jaws would clamp together and I couldn't chew. It got so that I couldn't even tolerate the smell of food. I was becoming skin and bones, and eating became repulsive. She remembered getting rashes before shows, especially when they had to do up to six performances a day. With Barry Gordy pushing them to keep going, she wrote about the constant fear of what would come next. Throughout it all, she was terrified that people would see she wasn't good enough and that everything would collapse. Despite facing numerous challenges, Diana Ross kept her personal struggles hidden until she shared them in her memoirs. Throughout her career, she remained an iconic singer who captivated people with her music and undeniable talent. And despite her struggles, she has shown herself to be a great mother to her children. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching.